ma du me ke du me di chaka di nalele botsela mo rena je so ke re du me lanhle stationne ke sa ga o sa mama rata mo gadi channel gana le mo profeta stress chale o tlo robotja ka last days ar to thantse be re kwe modimo o reng kana ko ya mafelelo ye o se ka le bala mo rero wa kgolo wa lenane o le ke o rena lwena re thute go bane le ke le ga ela thuto ar ke mo profeta ga ruta ka last days go rena go to dira ga lana ko nya mafelelo ar ko eta 2 Peter chapter 3 verses 3 and 4 and what this verse means I explained it I will just briefly go over it it means that the people of God should already know that when it comes to the last days we are going to go through the entire last days up to at least a certain point when certain irrefutable things will happen that will silence everyone God is telling us here through Apostle Peter that we are going to know that we've come to the last days because we are going to be walking out to the entire last days period with mockers and scoffers. We're going to be walking out the entire last days people um, period with people who don't believe that there is a God. We're going to be walking with people who believe that there is a God, but do not believe that God speaks today. So they believe that God spoke to John the Baptist and God spoke to Elijah and Moses, but they do not believe that the living voice and expression of God is available to us today as believers. They believe that all the living gifts, the fivefold office, the, the, well, not, they did believe in pastors definitely. And they believe in evangelists and teachers, but they do not believe that prophets and apostles exist. This is thankfully, mercifully, a small group of people, but that belief is growing. And this is because people fear prophecy. They fear prophecy. They've been misled by liars for so long that they are afraid to trust that God's voice is active or they have hardened hearts and they absolutely do not believe that a living God would express himself today, that God would be able to basically trust his cadence, trust his voice and his flow to anyone living today. And of course, that's a extremely confused belief. We're going to walk through the end times with people who are full of unbelief. This is something that I encounter here all the time. The Lord will tell me something I I am not unbelieving. I am extremely attuned to God's voice and God's heart. So I am not riddled with the sickness of unbelief. God will speak to me and I will capture accurately what he said. Write it down. However, when I come to speak and share what God has said, I am met with unbelief. Are you sure that God is speaking to you? Because this just doesn't seem like something that God would say. Why is your unbelief the benchmark of what God would say? Since when is anyone out there in a position to use their unbelief or their limited knowledge to be the measuring stick of, well, God wouldn't say this and God would say this. The reason that you're here is because, first of all, you may not know any of the things that God is saying. God has brought you here to seat you in front of a source that he is speaking to so that you can become privy to what he's saying. Therefore, your inability to travel along with the information does not then bring into question the fact that I have the information. Your inability to travel along with the information means that there are areas of gaps and areas of lack and areas of growth in your own information system that it is your responsibility to update so that you become updated with what God is saying. Those who fail in that process are going to find it very difficult as we go along because unbelief only breeds more unbelief. If you can't believe this, you won't believe that and you won't believe the other thing. And then soon you're filled with holes and gaps like a sieve. And that is your problem. Those things will affect your faith while the faith of those who do believe is going to remain unaffected, untouched. They will move from strength to strength, from faith to faith, and you will move from unbelief to unbelief, from hole to hole, until you finally fall into one of the, the holes that you have created within yourself. We will be walking through the last, last days with people who don't believe in a God, with people who believe in a God, but they don't believe that he speaks, they don't believe in miracles, they don't believe in signs, they don't believe in anything, they just believe in the cold, hard word as it is, without any dunamis, any power. We will be walking with people who are unbelieving. We will be walking with people who will become prey to their own doubts. 
people worship their doubts so much and they seem to think that that's supposed to also be my problem because you have doubts then i'm constantly supposed to come and say oh no don't doubt believe the lord believe the lord no i have an assignment to do here and as i'm doing the assignment you're either going to believe seek the lord for means to believe or you're going to not believe and then you will end up with the consequences of whatever you're able to choose and then we're also going to be traveling along the end times with people who are now very vocal in their unbelief. They're going to be very excoriating. Their, their mouths are going to be like hot lava and fire. They're going to mock. They're going to attempt to tear down the word of God actively. They're going to attempt to tear down messengers of God actively. I'm saying attempt because no man can tear down the word of God and no man can tear down God's messenger who is being actively upheld by him. It will only be an attempt, no matter how savage the attempt, no matter how committed the attempt, no matter how consistent the attempt, like Sanbalat and Tobias, it will still just be an attempt because no one can tear down God's living prophetic message from being true or from going forth. And so mockers and scoffers will not desist. And Peter was saying, you should know this as an opening premise. You should know this as a matter of fact. It should not be surprising to you.